Now we also have an overlay image and what the overlay image is is a special image that you create that can be overlaid on top of your live view image to help you line things up. So for example, and I have an example here that's requires us to be in a different aspect ratio. When you, if you go under the video, you could change your aspect ratio here. So if I was shooting a video in the camera, its aspect ratio is 16 to 9. So I'd set it there, and this is exactly what I would see. And there's other aspect ratios here if you're intending to crop it in post-processing software. But I'm going to just set it to 16.9, and I'm going to bring in a overlay. So click on Overlay Image, and I have one called Sample 1, and all it did was overlay this line here. Now I've designed this particular overlay image in Photoshop, and so I'll show you what this looks like in Photoshop. All it is is a bitmap image, and you just draw the lines that you want. Now anything that is going to appear transparent on the overlay needs to be transparent within Photoshop. So you can see this is all transparent area here. The only thing that isn't transparent is the line. Now it's very important that when you save this, you save it in the same size exactly as is being displayed in Live View. And it also needs to be displayed as a 32-bit bitmap. So we go Save As. And I'll just call this Sample 2. And when it gives you this option, you say 32-bit. Go Advanced Mode. And we want a R G B. So that shows the transparency first alpha, then R G B. Okay, so now that we've saved it, that will work as an overlay. And I'm just going to turn the overlay off. So you can turn it off here. You also have an overlay button here, on or off. This progress bar here shows the sensor thermal countdown. Whenever you start a live view session, a timer starts within the camera, and uh, the camera ensures that live view only runs for a certain amount of time, and, and typically it's about 30 minutes maximum. Otherwise, the sensor will start getting too warm. Now this is a bit less of a problem when you are using tethered live view because the live view uh, LCD panel is not active on the camera. So if the percentage starts getting close to 0%, the Trollmine icon will automatically shut down live view. And then you could just turn it back on. So here we could see it's 65%. We'll turn it off and back on. I've never seen any indications of image degradation yet in Live View when it starts getting near 0%, but uh, perhaps that's just my D7000. So we've already taken a look at how to autofocus. Now there's some other ways to uh, focus, and we have a separate video coming up here on using a focus pad. But basically, a focus pad allows you to manually adjust the focus. And so maybe. Uh, you may find that this is not in focus enough. You can use the focus pad to bring it into focus. You could also use a histogram. Now this is the live histogram uh, looking at the stream of images in live view coming from your camera. So if you have a D7000 or a D5100, uh, that lets you use a live view histogram. You need to set it up so that the movie mode is manual. Otherwise, the camera will attempt to correct the exposure during live view, and you can never get an accurate indication uh, on the histogram of what your camera is really seeing. We'll have a video coming up soon on how to use the live view histogram. We also have Live View Focus Stacking functionality, which allows you to capture a series of images at varying 
focus and then you can process these images in post-processing software such as Zerene Stacker or Combine ZP or Helicon Focus and it combines all those images together to give you a very deep depth of field. Let's see what else we have. In addition to Focus Stack, we, we also have a loop. and This is just a simple magnifier, but it's really only magnifying the pixels you see on the screen. So uh, you may like to use this. I, I typically don't because it's not giving a true magnification. And to turn it off, you just go back here. But you can zoom in on your image because you recall that the image that your camera is seeing is a very large image before it compresses it and sends it to you. So if I were to, for example, want to focus closely on this little area here, I would double click on it and then hit focus. Okay, it says it's autofocus, but let's really take a closer look. If I click on the in button, it's going to zoom in on the spot where that focus box was. Okay, well, so far, so good. So I'm going to zoom in again, and again, and again, and it should be one more time. Now, what's happening here is you're zooming in not on this small 640 by 480 image, but this large image. So you're able to see uh, a large amount of pixels here. If you wanted to, you could use a focus pad to tweak the focus here. Uh, but we'll just leave it for now. And now to zoom out, you just go out and out again. Keep on going. So this is a good way to ensure that you have the correct focus. If your camera has video abilities, then you'll be able to record. And uh, currently this is only available on the D7000 and D5100. All you need to do is click on the Vid Plus. And now it's recording. And to stop recording, is hit vid minus and ask you are you sure and we're sure and now it's saved that recording on your memory card you'll need to go retrieve that from your memory card once you've shut down control my icon and that's it that's how you use live view the live view functionality is a lot of fun within control my icon and it has a lot of features and we recommend that you take a look at the other help and each one of these help items here has additional video tutorials on using, say, the focus pad or focus stacking for, or for any of these things. And I just get more comfortable and familiar with how to use Live View. Happy tethering.